<clears throat> now, um, I'm not a handyman. Um, I do like to, uh, to write. I've, in fact, I got 10 books on, on, on Amazon, but that doesn't take any <clears throat> physical skill. Um, I love to travel, but that doesn't take any physical skill either other than maybe hauling your luggage around. But I do love to work in my backyard and, and, and uh, in my gardens, and that takes physical skill, um, although I don't have to put something together, you know. So whenever I get a box, you know, the, from a store over, over the Internet or something like that, and I open it up, I start sweating, you know. And, and you see this big bag of these screws. And, you know, there's 100 screws, and there's five different kinds. And, and they can never just give you a simple, simple tool to put this thing together, but you have to have two or three different kinds of tools, and sometimes they even give you a tool that's not a tool that you would have in your toolbox. Not that I have many tools in my toolbox, which is probably my problem, but, you know, and, and I know, before I start, I know that when I get to the end, there's going to be something wrong. I'm going to have something inside out or upside down. There will be something wrong because I'm just not very good at this. But I, you know, I, I get my stuff, I lay it all out, and I think about it, and I start putting it together, and sure enough, nine times out of ten, 90% of the way, something's wrong. Something's backwards. I put some screws that weren't supposed to go on that slot, they're supposed to go somewhere else. And I get mad. I get mad at myself because I knew that I was trying so hard to make it right, and I still didn't make it right, so I get angry and upset, and it's stupid getting angry and upset at a piece of furniture, you know, or the people who make the piece of furniture. But there's a big difference in being angry like that over something that you're doing. There's a big difference to that because that goes away. You know, when I finally get through with it and I look at it, I'm kind of proud. I got, even though something may be backwards, I'm still proud of it. And, and you know, you turn it around, nobody can see where I, got, I messed up, you know, so, so that's good. But when you get angry at somebody else, that's different. Because that starts creating a hardness in your heart when you're mad at somebody else. It, it never ceases to amaze me when somebody comes and tells me that they haven't talked to a loved one, to a, to a spouse, not a spouse, to a, but a sibling or, or a parent in 20 or 30 years because they got mad at each other a long, long time ago and, and they couldn't get over it, so they just quit talking to each other. And in order to live that way, you have to have a piece of your heart that's hard. You have, have, you have to have a piece of your heart that doesn't allow love to get into it because you're holding that anger inside you. Now, you, a lot of times you push it away and you don't even think about it until something comes up where then it does trigger something and then you, and then you, and then you feel that angst and you feel that, that aggression and that anger over that person that you had in your heart because it's still there. And what does Jesus tell us to do about it today? He says, if you come to the altar and you got something against your brother, go fix it. Get rid of it. Don't let it hang in your heart when you come to the altar of the Lord. You got plenty of time in that pew and plenty of time coming down that aisle that if you think back at it, back, back, and, 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 you, and you realize that you still got an anger towards somebody, get rid of it before you get to the altar. Let it go. I know that's hard sometimes because sometimes these angers are terrible wounds that somebody has done something terrible to us. But God wants us to get rid of that because it's not good for us. No matter how bad that person treated you, it's still not good for us to hold that in our hearts. We've got to let it go. And if we don't let it go, it grows, it festers, it gets bigger. It turns into everything else that we do in life. And as Jesus says, when we come down that altar, if we don't get rid of it, that we may be thrown into prison, which is the opposite of where we want to be.